Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Amen. Hear these words from Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and 29. Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And in me, you'll find rest for your souls. Grace be to you and peace from God who is, who was, and who is to come. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. We're gathered here to praise God, to witness to our faith, and to give thanks for the life of Helena Ludens. We come together in grief, acknowledging our loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, and in death, resurrection. Dying, Christ destroyed our death. Rising, Christ restores our life. And in baptism, Helena Ludens was sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever. Let's pray together. God, our comforter, You are our refuge and strength, a helper close at hand in time of distress. You forgive what we have done and what we have left undone. Your mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. Help us to hear the words of our faith that our fear is dispelled, our loneliness eased, and our hope reawakened. May your spirit lift us above our natural sorrow to the peace and light of your constant love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Helena Regina was born on September 28, 1931, in Springfield, South Dakota, one of four children born to Henry and Annie Palsma Ludens. When she was a young child, her family moved to Lime Springs, where she graduated from the public school. Following high school, Helena received her teaching certificate from the University of Northern Iowa in Cedar Falls. She returned to Lime Springs and taught in a one-room country school for a few years. In the mid-1950s, she moved back to Woodstock, Minnesota, where she worked as a first grade teacher at the public school in the nearby town of Edgerton. Upon retirement in 1997, she moved to Orange City. In 2011, She moved to Landsmere Ridge Retirement Community, and in 2018, she became a resident of the Prairie Ridge Care Center, both in Orange City. Helena was a member of the Trinity Reformed Church in Orange City, where she participated in the Trinity Seniors. She also participated in Blots, Blocks, and Knots, a women's quilting group at First Reformed Church in Orange City. She was a previous member of the Woodstock Reformed Church, and of both the Minnesota Education Association and the Edgerton Education Association. Her hobbies included knitting, crocheting, and playing Rumi Cube. Survivors include a sister-in-law, Shirley Ludens of Hampton, and many nieces and nephews. In addition to her parents, she was preceded in death by three brothers, John Peter Ludens, Louis Ludens, and Henry Howard Ludens and a sister and her husband, Grace and Eugene Van Wyck. Now I want to share with all of you just a couple of scripture passages that were named as important to the family and to Helena. So would you hear the word of the Lord in these passages? The first one is from Psalm 89. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth, I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You have a mighty arm. Your, your, your hand is strong. High is your right hand. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. 
Happy are the people who know the festal shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. They exult in your name all day long and extol your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength. By your favor, our horn is exalted. For our shield belongs to the Lord, our King to the Holy One of Israel. Now from Isaiah 43. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I've redeemed you. I've called you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Lastly, from Second Timothy. I'm grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers, night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I'm reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now, I'm sure, lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God. Rely not on those who, according to their works, have tried to fool you, but on God, who works according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. Now, I want to invite all of you to listen to the words of a, of a hymn that, that are important to Helena and to the family today.
Amen. What a day that will be. I want to share with you another piece of scripture. This is from 1 Thessalonians. This is from chapter 4, starting at verse 13. Hear this from Paul. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so will, we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Well, good, good morning. I, my name is Kurt Bush. I am the, I'm one of the pastoral staff at Trinity Reformed Church. Um, I serve Trinity's Hospers campus. I just want to say again, it's just an honor to be here uh, with you this morning. I, unfortunately, did not have the pleasure of meeting Helena. Um, but as I've prepared for this, as I've looked through some notes from Pastor Brian Keepers and listened to some of his words uh, about Helena, I feel like I can say with confidence that I'm pretty disappointed that I didn't get to meet Helena. I, I heard things like this from Pastor Brian's notes. I, I heard things that she lived a, a life of gratitude to God. Or, or things like this, that she lived a, a quiet, simple life, striving to love God and to love others. I, I heard about the, the gracious and generous care that she gave her mother after her father passed. I heard about, even just this morning, I heard about the deep sense of purpose that she found in being a teacher and pouring into kids, specifically teaching young kids how to read. I heard about her deep love for that. Here's my favorite thing that I've heard. I want to share this with you. This is, again, from Pastor Brian's notes. He, he wrote these words. This is a, a quote from his notes. He said, she had a deep faith and she just let it show. She didn't talk about it a lot, but she lived it. And the lived it in that was underlined. That's my, that's my favorite. Indeed, I, I think I can say I'm disappointed that I didn't get to meet this wonderful woman who lived an incredible life of faith. I'm, I'm not sure why, but when, when, when I was asked to officiate today and when I began reading these words about Helena and, and hearing about her life and her purpose and her faith, I, I, I felt a stirring in me that went right to these words from 1 Thessalonians that I just read. Specifically, these words from Paul. I'm going to read them again. But we don't want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died so that you do not grieve with no hope. In reading about Helena and, and hearing about her life, I wonder if she might want to share some words like this today, too, for all of you. I believe we grieve today, but I believe that we do so with hope. In fact, I think we grieve with great hope. See, the grieving today is not for Helena, because the beauty that we remember and celebrate today is that in, in this very moment, she's with her faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. Her striving is over. She need not worry about achy joints or physical, a physical body or mind that deterior, deteriorates any longer. She's free from all sorrow and all sadness. She's no longer burdened with trouble or fear. Her time of shedding tears is over forever. As our communion liturgy says, she is seeing our King Jesus face to face. She's finally once and for all united with Christ 
And as Paul goes on to say in this passage, she is living in this union with Christ and, and living this promise of being united and made new at the time of resurrection. Undoubtedly, she's heard the words that we all so deeply long to hear from our Savior, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. Indeed, we are not without hope today. We're not without hope. Rather, the grief we feel is for us. The grief we feel is for those of us that now go through life only able to remember Helena, not able to talk with her or see her. The grief is for those of us that, that, that maybe weren't ready to be separated from her just yet. The grief is for those who deeply miss their dear friend and loved one and who can only look forward to the promise of being reunited in new bodies. Grief is for those who count the loss of this wonderful daughter of God and sister in Christ. Though we can name confidently that we, that we have hope today, that today is a day full of hope, it doesn't remove grief and pain, does it? And what we know is that while grief may ease or subside, it does not truly ever go away. With that in mind, I can't help but hear words of Jesus from Matthew 11, the, the same words that we heard earlier. I want to read them again for all of you. Jesus says, Come to me, all who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and in me you'll find rest for your souls. As you undoubtedly carry a mix of rejoicing in Helena's union with Christ and the burden of grief of her passing, may you be reminded of these words of Jesus. May you hear them stirring in you this morning in ways that maybe you can't even understand. May you take heart that this same Jesus, the same Jesus that Helena so longed to be with and is in fact with now, this same Jesus offers rest to you today. This same Jesus offers nothing less than his whole self to you so that you might, might find rest for your souls. You need not carry the burden of grief and pain alone. He, hear these words from Paul just one more time. But we don't want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died so that you do not grieve with no hope. May the same hope that sustained Helena, even unto the last days of her life in this physical body, may that same hope now sustain you. May that same hope of Jesus, the same hope of being made new, being with Jesus face to face, may that sustain you today too in your pain and grief. Let's pray together. God, we give you thanks on this day for hope. We give you thanks on this day that it is not simply a day of pain and grief, but it's also a day of hope. God, as, as undoubtedly every person in this room is going through every emotion from pain to rejoicing, would you sustain them? Would those words from your son Jesus in Matthew 11 ring true in the souls of each person in this room today? May rest be found for their souls. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I want to invite you again to listen to the words of another meaningful hymn. Uh, this is the hymn, It Is Well.
Let's pray together. O God, before whom generations rise and pass away, we praise you for all your servants who, having lived this life in faith, now live eternally with you. Especially, we thank you for your servant, Helena. We praise you for the gift of her life, for all in her that was good and kind and faithful. We thank you for the grace you gave her that kindled in her a love for you and enabled her to serve faithfully. We thank you that for Helena, death is past and pain ended and that she's now entered the joy that you have prepared through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in who, whose name we pray, amen. Now the family would like to invite all of you to join um, together as the service continues at the West Lawn Cemetery as soon as we're done here. And as we conclude our time here together, join me in, in this prayer of commendation. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Helena Ludens. Acknowledge, we pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. <laughs>